No, this is not clickbait. This document is actually 582 pages long. And in today's video, I want to show you guys how to use it so that you can become a better Yu-Gi-Oh player. Hey guys, it's Yishan here with another Math in Yu-Gi-Oh video. Now, before I go on, I want to say if you enjoy these Math in Yu-Gi-Oh style videos, please consider subscribing. It lets me know that this is the type of video that people want to watch and that people enjoy. So if you enjoy it, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, if you have an idea for a Math in Yu-Gi-Oh video, please remember to leave it in the comments below because I actually got this video idea from a commenter on my previous Math and Yu-Gi-Oh video called How Many Hand Traps You Should Run. And I'll show the comment real quick on the screen here, but basically their point was, you know, I, I made this document in the last video. It had like uh, a bunch of different probabilities for a 40 card deck all the way up to 15 cards if you ran like 15 of a certain card. I wish you went up to 17 instead of 15. And this got me thinking, well, why should I stop at 17? You know, why not make a gigantic document that will just have every probability that any Yu-Gi-Oh player would ever need, right? And so that way they can compare probabilities, compare different deck sizes. And so that is what I made, guys. I made a, an entire 582 page document and I'm gonna show you guys right now how to use it. All right, guys, we're back with the 582 page document, as you can see in the right hand corner. Now, I wanna show you guys how to use this document uh, and explain to you what it is. So let's let's start with the explanation process first, because you know that 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 would probably be a smart idea. Okay, so what this document is is a list of every single relevant hyper geometric probability for opening hands for Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Now, if that's a bunch of rubbish to you, basically what you can think of it as is a big fat table of probabilities. Every single probability that you'll ever need is in one single document. Now, uh, what do I mean by every single probability? Well, okay, let's take a look at the example and then I'll show you guys what this document is full of because it's just full of these examples. Okay, so we've got this first thing, deck size 40, success is one, hand size five. Okay, you can see that it's it's denoted by this little thing in these brackets, 40 comma one comma five. What this is telling me is that the percentages listed down here are the percentages for a 40 card deck with a five card opening hand and one success. So for example, if you have like a Monster Reborn in your deck, what's the chance you open a Monster Reborn in your first five cards? Well, that's 12 and a half percent. What's the chance you open exactly one Monster Reborn? Well, there's only one, so it's the same percent, 12 and a half. Uh, you can't open two Monster Reborns if you only have one, so that's zero and three is also zero. If we scroll down, we can see that the one changed to a two, so now it's like we have a two up in our deck. You know, what's the chance we open a Malicious in our first card hand? Well, the chance of it, it being ex at least one is 23.72, etc., etc., etc. You get the point, okay? But what makes this document interesting and why it's better than just using the online hypergeometric calculator, if you're familiar with that, is that it's got all these changes in percentage, right? Which means the, the C of at least one means the change from one to two in this 40 card deck with a five card hand. That's the change in percentage. Okay, and that's really, really useful for evaluating, should I add this extra card to my deck? And I'm gonna go over an example, my, my personal real life example with you of how this actually made me re-look uh, how, how I should, uh, how many of a certain card I should put in my deck. But this change is really valuable. So instead of going on the hypergeometric website and, and plugging in all the numbers and then, oh, uh, okay, I gotta go one more, go one less, change this, change that. No, we could see it all here. We can, you don't have to remember any numbers. We can see the change. And so that's why this document is super useful. I find it really useful. I use it all the time. And now if you want to find anything, you can use control F or command F, depending on if you're Windows or Mac. And we can say, okay, look, uh, I can even do all the way to 60 cards. Chance of opening, if I have a 20 of something in my deck, I want to tally the chance of that in a six card hand. Well, I've got that here for you guys, right? Here we go. Deck size 60, success is 20, hand size six. I've got every single, I got the changes from 19 to 20. I've got everything. I've got everything that you need, basically. And so this is like the ultimate probability document for Yu-Gi-Oh players, okay? So, you know, yeah, let's say you're playing Crusader. Just a quick example. We'll get, then we'll get straight into my example. You know, I'm running a 40 card deck. I've got 15 Crusadia monsters because there's five main deck Crusadia monsters times three uh, and I'm opening a six card hand because I like to go second boom I can see all these percentages here I can look at the changes in percentages from 15 to 16 you know if I want to run a road to search one of the Crusadias boom I can look at changes from 15 to 16 I can see all these percentages and take that into account okay so 
what's so useful about these changes in percentage Ishan? What's so useful? Well, they allow you to see the, the difference it would make to add a card or to subtract a card, you know, to go from three to four, to go from four to three. How much of a difference is that making, right? Because if you look at one number, you don't really understand what's going on because you, you don't have anything to compare it to, right? You need to compare to see what is the most optimal for your deck, right? Okay. And so the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out, you know, what, what cards am I running and, and how do I, how do I want to interpret these cards? And what I mean by this is, is, okay, let's take uh, my Golden Castle Grand Maju deck for an example. I got second with that at YCS Portland. I was running seven Golden Castles in a 40 card deck. I was opting to go second. Okay. So we can go in our search thing here and go uh, type in 40 for a 40 card deck. I had seven successes and I had a six card hand. Okay, so this is what we bring up here. Now, I'm gonna put Golden Castle up on the screen here. But basically, it's summon effect is once hard once per turn. So my goal with Golden Castle is to draw exactly one of it. Drawing two is okay. You know, drawing two is fine, but drawing three or more is really, really bad. And drawing zero is also fine. You don't need that for the deck to function, but it's nice to have, right? So I just pressed enter so we could see it all on one screen, basically. But okay, let's take a look at the numbers here. So we've got a 71% chance of opening at least one. Hey, that's a pretty good percentage, but that doesn't tell the whole story, right? The chance of opening exactly one, 43.28%. The chance of opening exactly two, 22.39%. And the chance of opening three or more. 5.47%. Now, look at this. Look at this. These negative numbers. This is not a, an error or a bug. This means that from six successes to seven successes, from six golden castles to seven golden castles, my chance of drawing exactly one golden castle actually went down. Now, that's not good because actually I want to draw exactly one. That's my perfect best case scenario. So, uh, clearly playing seven golden castles is not optimal if I'm, if the scenario I'm trying to maximize is actually going down. That's just crazy, right? Okay. So clearly playing seven was wrong on me, even though I, I did well at Portland. Um, seven was probably too many golden castles. Let's take a look at six golden castles here. Well, we, we look at the changes. Sometimes I don't even look at the real percentages even more and, and they're still useful, but we, we just go straight to the changes and say, okay, well, my chance of opening exactly one. Yeah, it went up by 1.21%. So there was some change. Um, but my worst case scenario, three or more, is still went up by 1.56%. So now I'm forced to ask myself, wait, what the heck? If I go from five golden castles to six golden castles, that's what this change means. My chance of drawing exactly one golden castle, you're telling me it just went up by 1.21%, but my chance of drawing three or more went up by more, by 1.56%? That can't be a good deal, right? My, I'm, I'm increasing my worst case scenario too much, but only my best case scenario by a little bit. So that was like, oh, okay. Well, maybe I need to actually cut down my golden castles even more because if you can see for, for five golden castles, I'm actually getting a 3% increase on exactly one, but only a 1% increase on three or more. That to me seems like a much better deal for, so three for one, that's like a three times a better deal, right? So that seems like a much better deal. So that's my example for you guys on how to use this 582 page behemoth of a document. Think about what you want your cars to do. How many of them do I want to draw? Is it okay if I draw one? Is it okay if I draw two? How badly do I want to avoid drawing zero? These are things you need to think about. Think about your best case scenario. Think about your worst case scenario. And then look at your deck size. Think about if you're going first or second and take a look at the numbers. Look at the change and see what the numbers tell you because sometimes they can be pretty shocking. Okay, so that's what I'll leave you guys with. I hope this video was useful to some of you. And if you enjoyed, I will hopefully see you in the next video. Before I end this video, I want to tell you guys about my 500 subscriber giveaway. I just hit 500 subscribers. I'm giving away a cool mat. It just came in. It looks like this. Um, so if you want to pick one up, go check out my 500 subscriber giveaway video. Link is in the description. It'll also be up here.